In 1940, America was consumed by defensive-powered aircraft manufacture and was ill-prepared to shift resources to glider development and training. It would take until February 1941 when Major General Henry Hap Arnold acquired a keen interest in the successes of the German Glider Corps that the American glider program finally took off. Known as the father of the United States Air Force and a strong advocate of airborne envelopment through technological innovation, General Arnold would make an American glider program a central component of his strategy of technological advancement. On February 25, 1941, he announced, in view of certain information received from abroad, a study should be initiated on developing a glider that could be towed by an aircraft. It was America's first stealthy aircraft. Its nickname was Silent Wings. The aviators who flew them during World War II had no weapons, no parachutes, and no second chances. They were called the Flying Coffins of World War II. The most widely used American military glider during World War II was the Waco CG-4A. It was huge. It could carry 13 fully equipped soldiers, or a jeep with a four-man crew and equipment, or a 75mm howitzer plus supplies and ammunition. These gliders were towed into the air primarily by Douglas C-47s, they were connected by a tow rope that also carried basic communications between the glider and the aircraft. So why were military gliders used during World War II? Well, landing by parachute caused the troops to be spread out over a large drop zone and separated from other airdropped equipment, such as vehicles and anti-tank guns. Gliders, on the other hand, could land troops and their support equipment in greater concentrations, precisely at the target landing area. Furthermore, the glider, once released at some distance from the actual target, was effectively silent and difficult for the enemy to identify. Because the Waco CG-4A could carry heavy equipment like anti-tank guns, anti-aircraft guns, or small vehicles such as jeeps and light tanks, our lightly armed paratroopers became a much more capable and lethal force. By the way, these gliders did not soar. Think of the glider like a brick with wings. If things were working well, the gliders would cut loose from their tow planes at about 500 feet over their landing area. After the tow line was disconnected, the pilots had about 20 seconds to decide where to land. It was basically a planned accident. Guess that's why these gliders acquired the nickname, the Flying Coffins. In addition to crash landings, many glider casualties occurred from enemy anti-aircraft and machine gun fire. During the war, 6,000 men volunteered and trained as glider pilots. The possibility of officer's pay and the chance to fly attracted a particular breed of risk-tolerant trainees, and the glider pilot's maverick reputation quickly spread. Every landing was a genuine do-or-die situation for the glider pilot. It was their awesome responsibility to repeatedly risk their lives by landing heavily laden, engine-less aircraft containing combat soldiers and equipment in unfamiliar fields deep within enemy-held territory, sometimes in total dark. There were only a few instruments on these gliders. All of these instruments had originally been manufactured for use in powered airplanes, where engine vibrations would keep the indicator needles from sticking. The glider pilots flying their vibrationless aircraft frequently tapped all the indicators to be sure they were given correct readings. No wonder they didn't trust their instruments. <laughs>